Hey everybody, this is Brett Havlock, TN Artist. Just wanted to jump on here real quick and I thought maybe we could paint together. And actually what I'm gonna do to try and take some of the stress out of paintings, I know a lot of times if you're like me, you jump in and you're like, what am I gonna paint? What am I gonna do? Um, you know, how am I gonna get this started? So I'm using Art Rage here and I want to, um, for a couple reasons. One is, is that I'm going to actually be using a Bob Ross tutorial to try and put together some concept art. Because I thought, you know, Bob does a lot of these different uh, paintings that he's done. I mean, I forget how many years that he actually did it when he was alive. And the, uh, the great thing about his stuff is that they're quick and that they're easy to do. I mean, there's others out there that do uh, kind of a similar show and kind of stuff like uh, Bill Alexander, who actually did it before Bob Ross, and then uh, Jerry Arnell, who I've done, you know, one of his paintings from his book as well. But he he does more of a fine art type of, of deal, so it takes it a step further. But I thought, you know, one of the great things about Bob is that he is very relaxed when he does it. So I thought, can we take his same techniques, translate it into Art Rage using just the standard tools of Art Rage first? and then from there kind of tweaking a little bit. So that's what I'm doing here. So this is uh, Bob's painting that is called uh, Emerald Waters. And it's a very limited palette. The background I have here is what I, uh, is a dark green, almost black. Over top of that, I'm painting a yellow. And I am just using the standard brushes that are in Art Rage because I didn't want to use any stencils or anything like that at first, just to kind of show you some of the different looks and effects you can get as you paint along and do it. So what I'm using here is what's called the Lichen brush and a couple of the other brushes in the custom brush tool. The main thing with this is that you want to try and build up textures. So there's different ones I'm going to use here. So particle brush, uh, there's Four different particle brushes in here. There's a lichen tool and all of those are under the texture settings. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just trying to play around a little bit to get the feel for the texture that I want. And the nice thing is, is you know, um, when Bob paints his stuff, like a lot of times he'll do an underpainting of maybe a black or something like that and then put a, a layer, of, thin layer of green or something like that over top of it and then let the paint blend into it. So that's exactly what I've done here, is I've laid down a layer um, using the fill tool of this blackish green color. And then I'm taking yellow over top of that with the custom brush and just kind of scrubbing it in there to where I want. I use a stylus, I use a Huey on um, for doing my stuff. But the, the point is, is that because that layer is there and the way Art Rage is set up, Art Rage will react like it's oil paint laying there so the other color that you use will blend with it instantly and that's what I'm doing here is I'm laying these colors over top of it and it's blending in. I'm following along with his uh, Emerald Waters video and I'll try to remember to put a link down here below to do this. So this is uh, real time, this is me painting it and doing it. Now I've, I've already done the painting um, but I uh, re you know, recorded this uh, while I was painting it. And so it's, again, it's going to be real time. And because I wanted to see, can I do that? If I was trying to make some sort of concept art or if I was trying to uh, just relax and not have to break out the oil paints or the acrylics and do that, can I do that with Art Rage? And can you do that with Art Rage and just using the standard tools and stuff? And the answer is yes. Yes, you absolutely can. And so that's what I'm doing here is kind of taking this and playing around. Now, I don't have the tools showing because, again, I'm using the standard tools that are in ArtRage. I'm not using anything special here. I haven't made any custom brushes. Um, I'm not doing anything different. I'm just using the tools. And so down in the custom brush, and you will see it. If you uh, go to the settings that are there, the presets, then you will see uh, the texture column and then in there, you'll find stuff like the lichen brush and these particle brushes. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm just kind of going back and forth and, and lightly scrubbing it in. Um, you can even do this with a mouse. Like I said, I'm using a, a tablet and a pen, pressure sensitive pen to do this, but you don't, you really honestly don't have to. You can use a mouse if you want to for doing it. And roughly following along with what he's doing, I wasn't trying to recreate exactly what he's doing. Um, but I just wanted to see, can I follow along and do this? 
I have found for bushes and trees and, and water and stuff like that can absolutely do it uh, pretty much real time as he's doing it and, um, and kind of paint along and, and get that nice satisfaction of having created something. So uh, mountains on the other hand, I kind of have to do a little different technique to get the same look that he gets. Um, and so I'll have a video on that. I have a video right now. Uh, I'll put the link in here as well. It's the best how to paint mountains in ArtRage 5. Uh, and it always works, and it does. It's a really easy way to do it. But it takes a little doing because you have to make a stencil to get the kind of the best look for it. But I'm uh, going to do another one that shows how to do it using, again, just the set tools that are in here and not any um, custom tools or stencils. So again, what I'm doing here is taking the, the particle brush and just going in and building up layers of that texture um, and, and getting that look. And this is very similar to the tapping in motion that Bob gets with that two inch brush and, and that, uh, that round oval that he uses. So one of the things you gotta do here and be careful of is first of all, you need to change your particle size because that's going to um, give you that different depth of feel. But the other thing you have to be careful of is that these paints, because they do react so well and so realistic, they will start to blend together and buddy out. So I'm kind of having to go back in here and push and pull the darks. And all I did was select the background color, and then I'm painting that same color over top of the bright yellow that I was putting on here that turned into that green. So that's given a little bit more depth. Um, that is one thing with this painting, I think, that I kind of failed at because again I was so focused on trying to listen to what he was doing and following along what he was doing. I do lose some of my um, depth and some of my um, distinction between layers so there are ways to compensate for that but um, but again just trying to paint along real time with him so there's a little bit of pressure with, with that of like oh what's he doing now um, and trying to play around too. I, this is one of the other brushes that was in there uh, I wanted to see what kind of texture it would give. I didn't like it. So I took it back off. And uh, again, I kind of stick with the, the lichen and the particle brush. That seems to work really, really well for giving that, that just bushy feel to it. But I know if you're like me, you may be getting some cabin fever with their things going on in the world. So that's why I wanted to make um, some of these videos I figure we can just you know, and do that uh, this canvas is that light box it's an 18 by 24 inch canvas and um, if you're not going to do this for anything more than your own pleasure then set it at 72 uh, dots per inch uh, dpi so that way your system doesn't get bogged down you don't even have to go with the 18 by 24 inch canvas you can do whatever um, but i look wanted to have it the same ratio and everything else. So now what I'm doing here is this is where Bob's transitioned over to drawing twigs and branches and everything else in the background. So I'm using the ink tool um, and using it to draw. Now, one of the issues I have found with the ink tool is that as I'm drawing, I have a tendency to draw up and then come back down. And so it kind of messes up the trunks a little bit. Uh, and so that's kind of me playing around with it and trying to remind myself not to do that. But again, just trying to go in and throw the uh, um, twigs and, and branches and everything else in. So, but really, I mean, the main thing with it is, is just play around. You know, the ink brush uh, has multiple settings in it. So try a couple different ones, see what you like with it. I just picked a, a uh, the green that's in the background and then I smoothed the selector over to kind of an orangish color, which gave me kind of that, that burnt sienna look and uh, started using that to scratch in where I wanted the, uh, the twigs and the branches. So what I'm doing here now is I have taken the marker tool and I'm using the blending marker setting. So these, they, I gotta give Art Rage credit on this. The, these work fairly, when you're doing them just by themselves, not over top of this other color like I'm doing here, but when you're doing them by themselves, they work really well like Coptic markers. So what I'm doing here is using that same color that I was using for the uh, twigs and the branches in the background, I'm smearing it over top of that green, which is causing it to blend. And because it's the blending markers, they're giving that weird uh, back and forth texture. 
So I wanted to push this a little more, so what I'm doing now is I'm going in with the oil brush and laying in a lighter color, um, or lighter value, with the same uh, one over top of it, and then going back with the marker tool and kind of smearing it around a little bit. And it gives it that texture, gives it kind of the, um, the broken shoreline that he gets with the palette knife. And so that's how I'm doing this here, to uh, kind of lay that in and get that, that path, that dirt, that edge look to it. And I use the marker tool quite a bit for stuff like that. Um, so this is using one of the bristle brushes in the custom brush. I am stroking straight down, or trying to stay fairly straight down. Some of them do kind of curve a little bit. Uh, you can use Control and Shift to go exactly straight down. Up and down but the problem is, is that it does 100% pressure. You got to play around with the loading to do it. So all I'm doing right here is um, just kind of scrubbing back and forth, up and down to get that look of reflections. The one on the left, what I was doing with it was just doing short strokes. This is actually the one right, is just scrubbing up and down and then going with the, the color of the highlights. It's the exact same green yellow color that's from the top because I want that reflected down below with it. So that's what I'm doing, just kind of scrubbing it back and forth. And I want it to fade into um, the dark area below because this is going to be water. So I'm trying to break up some of the colors here and there with it. That was using the control. <laughs> you can see I do it. I forgot about it. I'm doing the full loading that you have it set for. And it's like, no, nah, that's not gonna work. So, and then from here, what I did was I grabbed that same dark color store pulling up. So instead of just pulling straight down, I was pulling up into it to break up the colors and give it that more of a sheen for the water. So that's what I'm doing right here with that. And then I'm gonna keep playing around with it kind of trying to see how I can um, get that look. Now you can, one of the advantages of, of working digitally is I could make a copy of this layer, flip it upside down, and then place it underneath that so that you can see all then erase away the extra so that you have an exact copy underneath it like you would for steel water that looks like um, a mirror. But I wanted that more painterly effect. So, um, so that's what I was doing. So now I'm going back in with the marker tool and breaking up the shoreline a little bit, adding a little bit of highlights to it so that I can start um, distinguishing it a little bit more. And again, trying not to get too caught up in details because um, I, I am trying to paint along with him as he's going in. Some of his stuff he can do faster because he's using palette knife and things like that. And he's not trying to get a program to recreate it. Whereas, you know, that's obviously what I'm doing, but Art Rage, again, does a very good job with that. That's what it's designed to do, is, is be more um, of an art program for painters and artists instead of like Photoshop. I mean, Photoshop, obviously, you know, there's people that do some amazing work, but you gotta know really kind of how to do that. So that's kind of a, a professional uh, level, you know, like upper level stuff. Not at all saying you can't do similar stuff with, with art range, but my point is, is that there is a lower uh, curve to entering into painting with art range because it's designed specifically for artists. So you can really jump in and not have to worry about generating custom brushes and not having to worry about to do you know this or that to get it to look right. Uh, instead, you can play around that. There are some interesting little tweaks and stuff that you have to deal with here and there, but it's really not too bad at all. For doing it, it's just a matter of playing around. So now what I've done is I've switched to a different size particle brush because I wanted to put some uh, different texture in for these kind of brushes in the background. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, so I changed the particle brush size to a smaller brush and doing it when it's smaller, it's going to compact the texture that's there and, and give it that different look. And so that's what I'm doing here. There are other brushes like in the sticker tool, for example, there are actual foliage brushes and stuff like that, which are just stamping the same uh, brush image over and over. Can work to give you some, uh, some cool effects, um, but I honestly think the texture, I mean, the, the custom brush does better for this. So, so that's what I'm doing right here is, is kind of playing around and, and layering. And you can see it, it, it is doing it because I mean, he was taking the fan brush and tapping in 
some uh, colors here. So I'm just using the custom brush in one of its settings to do the same thing here and give the kind of things. All right, so now what I was trying to do here is put in some yellow for the uh, highlight on the edges. That thicker one was me using control, not really uh, thinking about it again. But what I'm doing right here is just taking the ink brush, I'm the ink tool again, and scratching in some horizontal lines that give it kind of that reflective look. Um, and because that's exactly what he was doing, he was using a liner brush to do that with it. So the ink tool is about the closest you can get to a liner brush with this. Uh, I decided it was a little too harsh, so again, I'm go back to the marker tool with the blending setting, and I'm going over top of it and kind of trying to soften it into and blend it into the, the background, which to me gives a much more natural water feel. You can see it looks like it's actually sitting on top of but still part of that water look and the marker tool itself will even on blending markers will leave um, a mark on it so it gives you that really soft highlight that's there so that's what i'm doing right here and then in his he's got a little island that he painted in here so that's what uh, i'm doing as well taking the marker tool same process i was using for the uh, shoreline in the background is what i'm doing here and trying to get that set up and, and laid out as well. And then the ink, not the ink, but the oil brush, laying in highlights. And uh, then going back to the marker tool, blending it around, so. Now he also again went back and added some uh, bushes there. So I'm taking the same particle brush and just laying in some bushes here. And again, play around with these. You know, just, just one of the best ways with uh, Art Rage is just go poke around in the tools and see what's in there. Don't get caught up in a specific tool or a specific setting. What did that artist use? Just do it. Just go play around. Don't worry about it. That's why I didn't want to show the tools here because I didn't want somebody to get caught. Well, what was his setting on that one for this? Doesn't matter. Find the settings that work for you. Uh, so what I'm doing here is again going back with the lichen uh, brush as well, trying to really get some of that texture in here. Uh, I've made some custom stencils that I tend to use for doing bushes and stuff, and I'll go back into this in a little bit and do that. But for right now, I just wanted to see if I could kind of doing concept art, uh, kind of a look at, and paint along with Bob Ross to get that feel of what he's doing. Just that, so that, just that general feel of just, hey, you know, I'm trying to make something. I'm not trying to make necessarily a finished piece. I'm just trying to create. I'm just trying to paint, just trying to knock the cobwebs off. And so that's what I'm doing here is just trying to uh, uh, get that kind of done. So again, going back in and putting uh, reflections the exact same way using that uh, bristle brush from the custom brush tool and just kind of scrubbing back and forth, up and down, trying to stay vertical with it. I get a little off here and there, but the more vertical it is, the more it's gonna look like that reflection as you build over top of it. And do pay attention a little bit to your shapes, because you can see I'm kind of echoing the shapes below it. Uh, that is kind of important to know how that looks, because it gives that believability. And then going back with the marker tool and just laying in some of the same highlights over top. So getting that all kind of structured in there and uh, laid out. And then Bob's first quote unquote bravery test was coming up here in a second, where of course he's gonna start putting in some big old trees <laughs> in, the, uh, in the look of it. So um, let's play around with the highlights and stuff a little bit more than He'll start doing that. So he did put uh, some dirt over to the side to kind of frame the image. And, and that's, you know, I, again, some of Bob's uh, compositions, uh, coming from a, a, an art background myself, not necessarily the best compositions that he has. They're, they're very simple. Um, you can look at more interesting compositions with the, some of the masters, uh, paintings and stuff like that, where you want to have everything kind of off of the center and, and a little bit to the uh, side. And, and I did that a little bit here versus what he was doing. But um, 
it's just more interesting. You know, having your focal point right in the middle is not that great. But um, I wanted to uh, kind of, again, follow along with what he was doing and see, could I use some of the techniques he's doing if I needed to do a really quick concept piece? Is that possible? And the answer is, yeah. Yeah, you could do a really nice, quick concept piece and, and really have it uh, give you the, the idea. I mean, the whole point of a concept piece is to be the concept of what it of what it should be, and then you can go back and refine it more as needed. But but that's kind of what I'm doing here is just falling in love with what he is again using that lichen brush in the front, in the foreground. This is all done on one layer, by the way. This was not multiple layers. So because uh, I was again, that was one of the things I wanted to check to see. Well, what if we just stayed on one layer? How is it going to interact? What's it going to do? Um, so that's kind of what I was doing here. So here's the first bravery test, quote unquote. Uh, it's putting that tree right down the middle there. And uh, of course it's gotta have a little friend. So <laughs> it, gave it gave it the little friend there. Um, one of the things that I, again with the uh, ink tool is with the pressure sensitivity, it's kind of where it starts to work against you a little bit is making sure that you're having your pressures increase the right sun, uh, spot. So what I've done here is I've actually taken that same burnt umber, made the background, then taken and changed the value of the color picker and going with a, a, a slightly color and then uh, using the oil brush going over top of that uh, because I find the oil brush blends better. It gives that soft edges and kind of breaks it up to give you those highlights. Uh, and then going into the bottom down there, kind of blending it in. So I need to do some branches. So wanted that squiggly branch there as well. Smoothing is on here a little bit. You'll see it adjust. Um, I wasn't thinking about it and should have changed my smoothing to either be very, very little, like 10% or none. And, uh, you know, the nice thing too is that when you do something in this, if you don't like it, like I didn't like that branch, I can just control Z and undo it. <laughs> so it takes away a lot of the pressure um, from what you're doing. So. But yeah, just uh, throwing in some quick branches and letting it taper out for what I was doing. Um, I, again, I tend to have a soft hand when I'm doing this, so my branches get a little, to me, get a little weird and wonky. Um, you know, somebody else may be like, oh, that's perfectly fine. No. So kind of have that laid out there, which is what he did as well. And then he was like, let's, uh, add some leaves to these and so start adding leaves here in just a minute and try to make it set in. So that's what I'm doing right here is that here's the problem I was talking about earlier. That color kind of blends in with the background there so it's like it looks a little uh, too flat I guess is the best way to do it and that's 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 kind of a, a an art rage um, or really any digital painting uh, issue is that it's not necessarily going to um, go on like a paint wood where you'd have that very distinct difference. You can push it, you can change it a little bit more here. Um, and I noticed it was kind of muddying out, so I went back and kind of started changing some of it. Wanted to seat the trees at the bottom, so went over them and, and threw some little bit of bushes in front of it and got a natural shadow and everything there for it as well. But again, trying to paint with him and keep up with it, I couldn't overthink this. So he started putting in another tree over here. So I had to jump over to that and start doing the same thing. Uh, and so you now Bob, he's got to have that, that big old tree in the front. So that's what I was doing with this. And again, trying to paint along. So I laid in the, the base of it using the oil brush tool this time and then taking the oil brush and kind of just doing some vertical scratches up and down to get that implication of bark. He uses the palette knife for this. There's not a decent way to do that in Art Rage necessarily um, for getting that look. So I just use the oil brush and go up, uh, kind of vertical, quick uh, jabs and, and spotty strokes for it. He added a little bit of red to his. I thought, oh, that's kind of an interesting concept to do that. So, you know, being the um, complementary color to all that green, I 
thought, well, let me try and do it. And I liked it. Uh, he also added a little bit of what we call rim lining or edge lining, which is a secondary light, like uh, to give that reflective light, uh, blue on the side. Again, I thought, oh, that's a good idea. And do that. I tend to do that in my other paints as well. So that's what I've done here, following along with him as well for doing that. Uh, it does kind of make it pop a little more from the side. And so just kind of playing around with that a little bit here and there. The oil brush does blend it a little bit. You got to be careful when you're doing colors like this because you can't get, uh, it can burn out and give you kind of a halo effect. So uh, I'm trying to be gentle with it and just put in some uh, stuff here and there. And then wanted to add in some more branches. So that's what I'm doing here as well. I'm trying to uh, add those in and get those gnarly looking branches going off to the sides. And that's, again, that's just the ink tool and just really kind of shaking and, and moving it around to get that look. Used it a little bit here too to get some more um, bark kind of feel to it um, and kind of look. And so it breaks up that color on the side and then just keeps scratching in some smaller branches here and there. When I was doing this with him, I had watched the full episode to see what it was. So I was like, I bet he's going to throw some uh, more leaves on top of this. <laughs> so trying to figure that out and, and be prepared for it not to blend in as much in the background. And at the time, he was just scratching in some more limbs and stuff. But then he said, let's put some leaves on it. And I'm like, okay, how do I get that to look? So he was using a, uh, I think, an Indian yellow. So I looked at pulled up a similar uh, selection. Basically, I took the same green in the background and just kind of moved it towards orange, which is going to give you that warmer yellow and kind of make it stick out a little better, a little bit more towards the front. So that's what I'm doing. And again, particle brush, um, just to get that look and those, those leaves and break up of it. I mean, it's, you know, if you look at it close, those are all squares. So maybe not the best brush for it. But again, I, it's just the standard brush that's in there. So trying to use it, trying to get it to break it up. Realized I wanted to, to the, some of the backgrounds really blending in more. So I wanted to try and do that as well. And this was reaching, uh, starting to get close to the end of the painting that he was doing. Once it reached the end of it, I thought, okay, you know, it's not terrible, it's not great, but it's a, it's a, you know, a good paint along with Bob and see, get that feel for it. But then I, as I was kind of reaching this point, I thought, you know, there are some issues here and there where stuff's blending in. So what can I do if I wanted to take this and push it just a little bit more uh, and kind of use this as my underpainting? What would I do? What could I do to kind of adjust that and get that, that different feel and look? So um, I started to say, well, I'll use some of my stencils and some of my stuff to kind of pull it back, and I'll do that here in a second. But right now, I'm just trying to uh, put in some different bushes and stuff, and then I thought, okay, Bob's painting's done. Now let me start doing a little bit more of my painting on top of it. So these are stencils that I've made from tree limbs. I'm just taking photos of them, adjusting them to get these uh, black and white images and then I can then uh, turn into uh, stencils. And I've got a video on that on my channel as well. So why do I do that? Because I can get uh, much crisper and faster, more organic looking tree limbs and lay it in. So if I'm doing a concept piece or if I'm doing even a full painting, uh, you'll see some of these in my other paintings. Then uh, this gives me a way to do it and turn around. One of the things I do love about our region for its stencils is that you can completely move these around, adjust them, change the scale of them. Uh, you can use shift and control to adjust the horizontal and vertical stretching of them and really quickly give yourself some branches and some more uh, natural looking bushes and stuff and 
Uh, one of the things you can do, because what I'm doing here is taking this tree image that I did, and this is kind of similar. You'll hear the phrase photo bashing. This is kind of a relative to that. I would say a, co a cousin to it. Um, so I'm taking these uh, stencils that I've made, and I really got rid of a lot of the detail in them. I just wanted kind of some of the rough uh, look of them. And doing that here. So what I've done here is I've actually I've inverted it. So and, and why did I do that? Because I wanted to paint around it to put in some darks to really separate out that um, tree from the stuff around it. And so I'm painting in negative space here with it, using again the same particle brush um, to kind of break it up a little bit. And you'll see it. It's, I could have pushed this more, but I wasn't again trying to do this major. Um, painting and stuff, but you can see just that breaks it up, gives it a much more um, natural kind of look to it. So then I thought, okay, I want to throw in some fir trees and some different kinds of trees to again get a little bit different texture. So grab a stencil that I made of a Christmas tree from a while back and then using the particle brush to go in and paint that around it as well. And again, trying to give those visual textures, not going for a photorealistic um, kind of a look, but still keeping that painterly, um, but just trying to push what I've done from a Bob Ross painting into a little bit more of a concept uh, landscape kind of work. And so to try and push and pull it to give that a uh, little bit more of a finished feel to it. And I can use some of the same colors in there to kind of play around and get those textures and get that look. And that's what I've done there. And it, it's, it's a very subtle kind of thing, but it's one of those things where you, your eye picks it up. It's like, oh, there's a, a fir tree or there's a smaller one. There's a, a bush. There's, you know, this or that. So you can see that's very subtle, but it does break up some of the stuff. So doing the same kind of thing. So I have a bunch of different stencils. This is a water stencil that I made. Um, the, from a, taking a picture of a reflection of water and then I can stretch it just like that and really play around with the way it lays on the water and then take an airbrush tool uh, or the even the scatter brush again that, that custom brush and even that can lay in some highlights quickly and get that, that look so I'm using that same particle brush here um, and then you know decided I didn't really like it so that's why I moved it so I could look at it a little bit more I wanted to take the airbrush tool and lay a little bit of brighter highlights on it. And then go back and do some of the same to the other ones in the background. So I'm not using white, this is a very pale yellow. And kind of going around, so it kind of, it helps seat some of those ones I did in the background for the previous ones, it breaks all up. Again, a great way to get kind of that quick uh, look to it for a little bit more of a polished scene, but it still builds on top of the other stuff that I did using Bob's technique. So it's, again, Bob's is a great way to start like your underpainting and play around. So those are, this is actually a couple of different ones that you see me kind of cycle through. And what I'm looking to do is, is uh, start adding some texture to the bark. So I have some rock textures that uh, made stencils from and then by taking and twisting and contorting the stencil because again you can do that in our age it's one of the cool features of it I can take the oil brush and lay in some highlights that gives me that bark feel uh, to it so and again like I said the other stuff I was doing very much the standard tools these are a little bit uh, obviously custom kind of stuff because I wanted to get more of a feel for it and if I were doing this for a piece for myself or for a finished piece, still very much um, the underpainting stage because there you'll see down there at the, the towards the bottom of this tree where I was putting the water highlights, I went over top of the tree a little bit. So, but you can see how that breaks it up almost like his palette knife would for when he was adding in those highlights. It gives that texture um, and just the implication of bark and all that. You know, it's, that's one of the things is that when you're painting these concept pieces or even a finished painting you're the important thing is, is you're not trying to make a photo you know you're trying to trick the eye um, you know you're doing impressionistic uh, 
landscape. And that, it, it, for me, anyway, that's what I'm doing because I'm trying to get the impression of a landscape. I'm trying to get the feel of how that light moves around. And I, that's another tree stencil that I uh, have. And I can just take it, move it around, push it around, and get a, a different type of bush. And the nice thing with Art Rage is that because I can use the custom brush, and because I can use these stencils, I can quickly lay in and use the same stencil, but get many different looking brush and uh, bush type looks and stuff with it just by moving it around and just by playing with the different lights and, and stuff. So. so you can see that's kind of um, what I'm doing here is, is getting, uh, you know, again, kind of playing around with the background and getting that look and uh, getting that more of a polished type feel to it so that it, it does uh, have that look. So kind of reaching towards the end of this and, uh, you know, getting it, it finished up and, and kind of done. So again, you can take and use uh, just the straight stuff out of the can, if you will, for Bob's type paintings and get some nice finished uh, uh, works with it. And you can uh, then from there refine it even more, make it more of your own, which is what I'm doing here. So definitely play around with it. Use it to, you know, if you're wanting to get into some concept art type stuff, this is a great way to start. This is a great way to play around um, and just kind of get the feel for it and say, okay, you know, do I like how this looks? Do I like how that looks? Um, you can make some stencils. I've got videos on doing that as well. And all I'm doing here is just adding in some details in the front to kind of break up that, uh, that foreground a little bit. Realized that that one, that since I am painting on one layer, that one stick that was there, it didn't look right. Uh, so I had to go back in and kind of paint over it to break it up a little bit. So yeah, kind of reaching the end of this. I hope that you've enjoyed it. I hope you've learned something from it. I hope you'll uh, try and paint along. I'm gonna do a couple more of these and that way we can uh, just kind of paint together during this whole fun new uh, world that we're in and, and kind of do that. But this is a great way if you, if you are low on art supplies for traditional artwork and you want to uh, still create and still paint, Art Rage is probably really my top recommendation for doing so because it is just so much easier to use and it's so much user friendly for especially somebody kind of starting out with some digital painting. And if you're used to getting that digital painting, uh, traditional painting look, uh, and you're working with traditionals, then you'll find that this really, for the most part, does work very similar to how traditional paints work. Um, and then you can even push it even further to, with custom stencils and, and playing around with the settings and stuff. But I wanted to show you just a, just a real quick painting of, hey, yeah, you can paint along even with something like Bob, what Bob Ross does to get that look and feel for it all. So, um, so that's what I've been doing here and just kind of, uh, you know, getting that same kind of stuff. So I, I hope this has been encouraging. I hope that you've enjoyed it. Uh, leave a comment below, a like, subscribe, and let me know any questions you have. I try to answer these as fast as I can. I'll keep doing some more of these. If you like these, I may do a whole series of them. Just, hey, how do you take a start with a Bob Ross type thing or a Jerry Arnell type thing or a Bill Alexander type thing and implement their techniques as if nothing else is the base, but then, you know, kind of go from there with it and create more of your own type artwork. So um, make sure to come over to the Facebook group that I have and join there. It's Art Lessons. Facebook, the link will be below in the video. And if you need a copy of Art Rage, um, I have an affiliate link below. It gives you a full trial to try out. So you just can't save or print from it uh, until you buy it, but it, it's fully functional otherwise. So if you just want to play around and, and make some art, you can definitely do that. And um, you kind of go from there. So uh, yeah, I'm just going to kind of keep playing around with the stencil a little bit here. And changing it to 
put in some different looks and limbs and kind of keep pushing it. And so, um, so just enjoy watching the rest of the video. And like I said, make sure to leave a like and subscribe and comments below. So thanks so much, everybody.